finally, 14 years later, Pixar finally makes the movie sequel we've been waiting for. So how is it? It's laser time and we're gonna do a review. Yes, we're gonna review. We'll talk about movies and comics too. Let's all go watch the review. Welcome to another review, and I'm going to take off all this stuff because it is hot right now. It is hot. I mean, I'm doing this because I'm super psyched up because it is time to talk about Incredibles 2. That's right. It is about time Pixar finally got their stuff down. You know, you know that they know we've been waiting for a long time for this movie when the film starts with all the cast saying, Hey guys, we know it's been a long time, but it's going to be good. Trust us. So The Incredibles 2 picks off right where The Incredibles left off. They fight the Underminer in a big fantastic fight that goes uh, all throughout the town, but then they're uh, chastised for it because, you know, they ended up causing all this damage, but then they come across with this uh, businessman who is going to, uh, you know, wanting to bring the supers back. And he uh, wants Elastigirl to be the one to do it because she's the most PR friendly and does the least amount of damage in her missions. So Bob has to look after the family and Elastigirl has to deal with a new villain called the Screen Slaver. Okay, so first things first that I want to say about The Incredibles is I honestly, like, part of me still wishes that they time jumped ahead like a few years where we get to see Dash as a young teenager, Violet moving into adulthood sort of thing, but there is part of me that really likes it. It just takes off right at the start, right at the beginning, right from the Underminer sequence. So we get to see that fight go down and that this video game apparently doesn't exist anymore. Not that I ever played it, but you know, I just find that amusing. But we get to see a little bit of a role reversal thing because, you know, Bob is now having to be the homemaker and the person that uh, looks after the kids and Helen is going out into the world doing all the uh, work and getting the jobs done and, and fighting crime, doing living basically Bob's dream. I'm sure the obvious question that everyone's going to ask when it comes to The Incredibles 2 is, is this movie incredible? I wouldn't say it's incredible, but I think it's pretty good. Because the thing that the, the other movie had is that all the themes tied into each other. Every theme tied into the other one of the their character arc, you know? And everything fed into and around each other. Where this movie, while the themes are good, and I actually like uh, quite a bit of what they do with it, and I'll get into that in the spoiler part of this review, the, I think the themes are more like standing on their own, you know? Like, Bob is having to deal with, you know, being the the person looking after the kids. And I like, like, he has a good character arc with that. Like, I like how he's struggling with that, but he's trying his best to, you know, not let Helen down. He knows, like, I like that he doesn't feel like his job of taking care of the kids is beneath him. Like, he's like, oh, I should be out there fighting crime. Like, he's obviously jealous of Helen and what she's doing, but he doesn't, you know, and he acknowledges that. He's like, yeah, no, I'm totally jealous. I wish I was out there doing that, but I'm also happy for you, and I'm going to do my best to do this job. And he does. I like how he does. You know, he complains, but he's also is like, no, you know, I'm going to do my best to make sure I am the best dad I can be. And then Helen's uh, mission is more of the, she's the one fighting the supervillain, and she has to go out there and, and take the supervillain on and do all these really cool action sequences. I'll admit, like, that the very first one with the Alaska girl in the train, that one, I was like, this is so flipping cool. I am so psyched to see this. And to see, like, because The Incredibles was good, but their action, like, like it was very good. Like, the action scenes were good, too. But uh, when it came to, like, like, Dash had the biggest, most intense uh, fight sequence in The Incredibles, where the the rest of it was just, you know, punching here and there. Where here, they really go, like, Elastigirl, they, they use her powers to the fullest, and they really do a lot of it, and I really like it. And that whole chase sequence in the beginning is, oh, so cool. 
But on the same time, it doesn't really tie in once again with what Bob's dealing with. Because he's on a thing where he wishes he was doing hero work, but he's doing the best in his position. You know, Helen, in a lot of ways, still wants to take care of her kids and her family at home. And she has many times where, you know, she thinks something's going wrong. She'll be like, oh, no, that's it. I'm coming home. And he's like, no, 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 that's fine. We're all fine here. You know, there's that. But she seems to, like, really be enjoying her, the hero work that she's doing. So I don't really see how that plays into Bob's dilemma all that much. Then we got Violet, and she has this thing, I don't want to go into too much spoilers of territories, but she has this thing with Tony, and I just want, quick side note, I love kind of what they do with the design of, of, of Tony, because like, uh, when Pixar did the first Incredibles, they were basically just doing just humans as main characters for the first time, and they invented a new CGI program that allowed them to make quick humans... Uh, without having to do all that much detail. That's how a lot of the characters were made. The Underminer was made that way, Dash's teacher and principal, and Tony Reidinger. And you, and when you watch it now, you can kind of see the difference between, you know, like, the Parr family, which are intricately designed, and some of the other characters in the background, which are more, I wouldn't say sloppy, but, like, like they're using this other program, and it, you can kind of see it. It doesn't take you out of the film or anything, but after hearing about it, I can, I can spot the difference. Where here, you know, we get to see a fully designed and rendered version of Tony, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. But anyway, once again, her plot, I guess, feeds into Bob plot the whole because he's trying to take care of his kids and what they're doing but I don't really see how it works into Helen's you know it's almost like we're in two different movies one is Helen's whole thing versus the villain which is good and one is Bob's whole thing with taking care of the family which is good but they don't necessarily mesh as well as I would want but in the end, I gotta say, I love all the characters. I think they all do, the people who return, I think, do their voice as well. And the people who replace them, like Dash and uh, Agent Rick Dicker, uh, I think do pretty good. Dash especially sounded like exactly the same. Uh, I, I barely even noticed. And he did a really good job. And I think this film has a lot of really funny moments. In fact, it might be funnier than the first one. But I wouldn't say as good. I don't know if it's just the timing. I have a feeling if this came out, like, uh, you know, four years after The Incredibles, I think I would have dug this movie a lot more than I do. And, like, as I say, I still am pretty psyched about this movie. I still enjoy it quite a bit. And I would rewatch it with somebody else in theaters. But it's not as much as... It, I guess it's, it's the feeling of... It's like the Toy Story thing. When Toy Story had Toy Story 3... We felt the emotional journey with them because we've been on this journey with them and the years have gone by for us as well as for them. And I think there's a little bit of a disconnect because for us, I, th I wonder how like kids who have like just recently watched The Incredibles, when they see The Incredibles 2, I wonder how it will grow up with them. Because for, for a guy like me, I grew up with The Incredibles. I watched it, watched the special features, every single, every single detail on it I, I saw multiple times. Uh, and then I waited 14 years, and then, you know, the, and then I saw The Incredibles 2. I wonder how it will hit somebody who's just went from The Incredibles to Incredibles 2. Maybe the time does add something to the emotional experience. However, I can't really hold that against it in terms of critical rating. Also, I guess Dash doesn't really have much of a character arc. Although he did have, like, one of the fewer things in the first one, too. But, you know, he, Violet has a sub, a, a character arc, a sub-character arc, and, uh, you know, Mr. Incredible and, and, uh, and uh, Elastigirl are the main focuses with her getting a lot more focus, and I like the focus they do. Honestly, a part of me just was like, can we just get rid of the Incredible stuff? I'm liking what I'm seeing here with uh, Helen and, and her fighting the supervillain. This is just classic superhero stuff. This is more family drama, and I'm more here for the superhero stuff. Speaking of that, the villain, uh, I will... I think the villain is satisfactory, but a little disappointing. And I'll get into why in the spoiler part, because I, I don't want to spoil it. But let's just say I saw what was going on very quickly. Like, instantaneously. But that being said, the action is fun, the humor is on point. There's a moment that made me laugh, like, really, really hard. 
Uh, it's, it's very fun. I like all the characters. None of them act like jerks for no reason. Whenever somebody does something that another person dislikes, there's good intentions behind it. And so that's why in the end, I'm going to give The Incredibles a... Seven and a half out of ten. I was kind of edging on maybe seven or maybe eight, but I'm like, let's split the difference here. I think it's a very good movie, and I, I think that I wouldn't necessarily call it a great movie, but I think it's right below that level. I think it's a very good movie. So now it's time for the spoiler part of the review. If you have not seen this film, go ahead and watch it. I, I recommend it, and if you've definitely seen the first one, it's definitely a must-see. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's my thing. Spoiler warning. Here we go. Yeah, I knew that the sister was the screen slaver the moment she walked in the room. Like, I know I said in my prediction video that I thought it was the brother, but part of me was wondering, like, I only had, like, I had images, right? And then the different images of different people, and then I saw one of this girl in the background, like, who's that? If she's like a secretary, maybe, but if she's like related or something, maybe she's something more... But I, I didn't, I, I saw it while I was editing the video, so that's why it's not in the predictions video, because I was like, oh, I didn't even notice that character before. Who's that? And, but as soon as she walked in the room with all the plans, I'm like, villain. That was my first instinct. And as the movie went on and Helen and her kept on having philosophical conversations, I'm like, oh, come on, you're, can you make it even le more obvious? Come on. Here's the thing, guys. If you're going to have... A villain whose identity is hidden, but it's very obvious to everyone watching who it is. Just don't hide the identity from us, you know? Hide it from the Incredibles, but have us in the know, you know? It's like, nobody was fooled. Like, I don't, unless you were a little kid, I don't know of anybody who would buy that, like, who wouldn't figure out that it was her very quickly. They establish, give her motivation right off the top with her saying, if only they went in the panic room. We've discussed this, sister. Yeah, motivation, right off the bat. Uh, technical know-how. They show that she's the ones making all this stuff and making all the devices. Easy. Philosophical discussions with the heroes. Another easy one. It's just like, why don't you have us know and the heroes don't know, but have the heroes figure it out? I like that better because, at the very least, I don't feel like you're trying to hide a big twist from me, and then when I know what it is, it's like, oh, I was supposed to be surprised by that. Well, I wasn't. whoop de doo But I also think they really could have dived into her motivations more. Okay, so they, she has this thing where she's, she's against superheroes, and she wants to use her mind control technology to make everyone hate superheroes. Everyone already hates superheroes! In the very least, you know, like, the government's against them. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's not like... There is no reason for her to intervene. Because if you think about it, if she didn't intervene and her brother's program thing failed, then there would be nobody clamoring for the superheroes to return. The only reason people were clamoring for the superheroes to return is because you made this whole villain and made it look like, oh, wow, we do need these superheroes. Which, okay, let's be fair, there would be, have to be a humongous investigation before they let that bill actually count. Because the sister of the brother was uh, who's been trying to do this was a screen slaver. Yeah, that is way too suspicious. There's no way they just let that bill go through. In fact, there was no way, there, there'd be no way of them knowing that Bob and Helen were technically mind controlled. They could pretend like, oh no, we were mind controlled. It's like, yeah, but how do we really know? I don't know, I'm just saying, like, the, the, the film kind of wrapped up a little bit too quickly for me. And I'm wondering, like, the thing with her saving the villain, I wonder if that's a thing with to address people's complaint that Bob killed Syndrome in the end. Also, the Jack-Jack thing could have paid off more. Like, I don't know what in Mr. Incredible's conclusion is. I wish that something he did while he was, you know, helping his family, something small, aided him in the end. But in the end, he just had to hook himself to an anchor, swim underwater, and push the boat another way. Mm. And couldn't Frozone just have frozen the water solid? I mean, you froze things enough to stop a drill. You could have just frozen the entire water solid, right? That was the first thing I thought of. 
But I do have good moments. I like the scene where Frozone and uh, Dash and Violet have to take on all the mind-controlled superheroes. That was a really fun moment. The action is very fun. I love the return of the Incredimobile. That is pretty cool. I like how they did that. That was really fun. The scene that got me to laugh so hard is when Violet spit water through her nose. The film is good. I'm just not entirely sure how I personally take it. Like, I enjoyed it, but it didn't hit me as hard as an Incredibles punch, so to speak. But I've heard other people say uh, this that I'm going to say, and I agree, that it, we need a third one now. It's fe this feels like the second one now. The, the, the Incredibles felt like it stood on its own, but was open to a sequel. This one feels like the second of a trilogy, and there needs to be a closing act. You know, the hiding of the superheroes... The return of the superheroes, the triumph of the superheroes. I think it needs to be at least three. But who knows when Brad Bird will get to that one. Oh man, if it's another 15 years, I'm gonna be almost, I'm gonna be 45. I better have kids by then, otherwise I'll just look weird going to a Pixar movie alone. Or maybe by that time everyone will accept uh, Pixar and animated movies as a fully realized art form and not just something for children. But we can only hope. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Lazy Dude, and uh, yeah, see you around. Be sure to check out some of these other videos on my channel. And wait for more coming soon.